Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the very first edition of the Bobby Mo Football Show, live on on TV. Or guys, we're on TV. Hi, mom. Hi. All you said I'll never make it. With special guest yeah. Luke Gios, of course, who is Honestly. not normally here. We had Greg Sutton, our first guest. It's usually just us two, but Yost has uh, decided to join us for this one. You know, he's a lot prettier than you. Greg. That's actually Thank why we you. put him on. I have more hair. Well, I that's not hair. fair. That's a low blow. Um, I hope Greg that's hears that. Blow. It's up, uh, it's in up calling, up in <laughs> calling Greg ugly was was acceptable. <laughs> was okay. you're, yeah. you're right. All right, yeah, okay. that was, that was wrong. You're two let's both gorgeous on. gentlemen. Let's just, just end it at that. All right, so Bobby Mo Football Show. Clearly, the first thing that we need to talk about. All right, Robert Morris coming off this 56 to 35 homecoming loss. Now, the loss looks worse than it was in terms yeah. of the overall game. Because Robert Morris, for the most part, was in that game. It was back and forth, scoring. Neither team really able to make a stop. That was kind of the big thing that I noticed. Um, I, again, the, the elephant in the room is the 699 yards that the defense allowed. So, guys, from you, I just want your thoughts about the game, Robert Morris football in general. What did you, what did you see from Robert Morris in this game? From me, from my perspective, you know, we were at the, we were at the game. You and I were at the game. Mike called it. But anyway, Mike caught it. And, like, we can all agree that up until that last interception with, like, four minutes to go, it was a two-possession ball game. It was a winnable game for our Morris. And they were in that situation with Bryant. They were they beat uh, VSU in a very close game. They can get – they if they can just finish the fourth quarter, I think they're going to be fine. But as far as the defense is concerned, if, it, if this week isn't the week to panic, then when is it? When is it? When is you know they're at almost 700 yards of total offense against your defense? When do you go? Oh, okay, yeah. Let's actually you know look at this from a overall point. You know, Brian was all about missed tackles, and we talked to Coach Clark today. Said nothing about about missed tackles. It was all yeah, it's the coach's fault. We're gonna put those guys in position to make tackles. He did say tackling was an issue. Though. But anyway. <laughs> She's cut that out. Um, My word, Yost. <laughs> I, was, I was watching football. <laughs> this is why, this is why we don't put him you. on. This is why, you know, sorry, you know, that you're out. But you're just going to have to wait. That's fine. That's no, fine. but what he was saying was this game was a lot closer than the uh, than the score did say, and there were some times in that game where despite the fact that Robert Morris couldn't stop or provide any resistance whatsoever against CCSU, there were some chances in there where RMU could have come back and tied when, when they were down two scores. Um the first instance I can think of is right before halftime. You come in off that weather delay, you have 40 seconds left, you're down two touchdowns, so you're on what? They were on what? The 34-ish yard line? They weren't They weren't right up against the goal line, but they were in striking distance. With 40 seconds left, I believe they might have had a timeout or two as well. And they come back, and the thing, while they had the possession, they could have scored there, and they were getting the ball back after halftime, which I think is huge. Those two possessions right there, and then maybe you get a stop, and you're back to that trading blows game where it's you guys score, we score. They score, or they score, Robert Morris scores. But they decided to run a, I believe it was like a speed option or something like that with Walker right out of the break after they had already taken a sack on first down before the lightning break. So it was second and like 21. They decided to go with the speed option, gain like three yards. Third and 18, they had to throw it down the field, and then they ended up having to kick a long field goal, which Paseglia missed. Granted, it was a very long field goal. I don't blame him for that at all. He just came up short. Um, so instead of getting something out of that, they ended up getting absolutely nothing, and I believe they might have scored right back after halftime. Well, yeah, they did because CCSU's defense didn't play much better. Army's offense was really good. But then there was that fumble opportunity where the Colonials stopped, uh, or in the second half, rather, where the Colonials got the ball back. They could have went down and added another touchdown, cut that lead in half. And they ended up punting, which I believe they punted. It was like fourth and one on like the RMU 40-yard line. But there was like seven minutes left in the game at that point. So I'm thinking, sitting there up in the booth thinking, this got to be a fake punt, right? Why are they sending this? That's, why that's, are, we why talked are, about that too because yeah. we were there. Why were they sending the punt team it. out? It's one yard. You know, your defense hasn't provided any resistance up into this point in the game. That I believe the f- fumble 
at the goal line ended up being the first time Robert Morris, maybe the, oh, no, they punted later in the game. But I believe the first time that Robert Morris was able to stop the Blue Devils. So I'm thinking to myself, they, they got to be going for it. And this might, actually we're calling back, this might not be that particular instance right after the fumble, but that was another play call where I was scratching my head where you could claw back into this thing and it's now or never. You're down two touchdowns. There's seven minutes left in the game. Each first down that CCU gets, they could take two minutes off the clock just by waiting to snap the ball. So and that's if your defense didn't make the stop. Exactly, and RMU's defense up until that point had shown that they had struggled doing that, obviously allowing 699 total yards throughout the course of the game. So that was one of those things where I was like, I thought they should have went for it there, maybe claw back a touchdown. but. So so let's be clear with something, though, Mike, because you're sitting here and you're talking about, you know, if the offense had done this, if they had run this play, if they had done that. None of that is a problem if you make oh, a stop on absolutely. defense. I mean, the team put up what was the eighth best offensive performance in the history of Robert Morris. Um when you put up 487 yards and you score 35 points, you should be able to win a football game. Oh, and the fact that Robert Morris has put up 35 points, they've put up 46 points, they've put up 28 points in a game, and they have won none of those football games, I'm not blaming the offense. Jimmy Walker is running a phenomenal offense. That offensive line is arguably one of the best in the NEC. The fact that the defense has three sacks in five games, the corners can't seem to cover anybody. They can't seem to... The, and the fill the edges. The, well, the reason the, the reason middle of that the middle of that defense, whether the running zone man doesn't matter, is has been the problem all season. You watch even Virginia State going back that far. That their Virginia State's quarterback torched just the middle of the field. He would run option plays and just cut back up the middle, yeah. and he was and gone that, for see, 15. And that's I'm not trying to blame the offense because the offense certainly did their part. However, I'm saying you might have to be a little bit more aggressive with your pay, play calling when your defense for the entirety of the season hasn't been able to stop anybody. And did that defense even commit a turnover at all against CCSU? Other, other than the two fumble recoveries in special teams. There was a fumble yeah, recovery on the goal on line, the goal too. Line. Uh, Dolgala, was, they ran, I believe it was a speed option. He kept it, and the defensive back punched it out of his hands while he was uh, okay. cutting up into the and, hole. And that's great, but again... Those turnovers only do so much when you're letting up 11.2 yards per play. I mean, they're averaging a first down oh, per yeah. play. Yeah. That's, I think there was a me, stretch even like in the first quarter, sorry to cut you off, where they literally – two drives, I think it was, where every play they picked up a first down for two drives. And I, I remember I was calling the game with Spencer Witt. Spencer was doing play-by-play. -play, and at one point I think I remarked, Spencer, I think that's the first time in like a while – that we've seen Robert or uh, CCSU not pick up a first down on on first down, and they still picked up like nine yards or something like that on the first down play. Which, mm -hmm. when you're giving up that many yards on first down, second and third down, that's going to be so hard because just stopping a team to getting one yard is an incredibly difficult task. On third down, it's a little bit easier of a task, and obviously when they have two downs to do it. And on, not only that, it opens up the playbook to so many different options. You can run a play action pass and hit them deep, or you could just go and pick up the first down on second and short. So in, in, even though I don't think CCU necessarily threw the ball downfield a whole lot, there was a couple big plays where they had guys open downfield, but a lot of what they did was that option and draw a handoff and the read option – and dumps off into the flat that ended up – they'd dump it off into a flat and they'd still get, what, 15 yards the out of the The pursuit of the ball so. has been very – Yeah, yeah and that's where They're tackling kind of comes back into it as well. Although I've, I think it was worse in, weeks pre in previous weeks, it still wasn't up to snuff. And there was a couple big plays. I forget which drive it was. I want to say it was – I forget what the, what the situation was, but they ran a simple curl route. The defensive back missed the tackle and they – uh, CCSU ended up taking it down to like the goal line or somewhere in there, and then they ended up on the next play running it in with a handoff. But still making that tackle, make make the offense work. Make them run those extra plays because CCSU was fairly undisciplined, you know, holding penalty or they had a couple false starts, I want to say. So make them make a mistake even. just It's a lot easier to do that when, to stop them on defense when you're making the stops and making them run those extra plays as opposed to just letting them get it all in big chunks. Yeah, so taking a step back, that, that begs the question here. So if you're looking at this Robert Morris team, five games into an 11-game season, they're sitting at 1-4, 0-2 in conference. Realistically, Robert Morris needs to win out to have a chance of winning the conference. Um, 
But that isn't necessarily the focus. It's the first year of a new head coach for a program that struggled traditionally. In your opinion, guys, how many wins does Bernard Clark need to end with this season for this to be considered a successful season? I would say in the realm of four or five. I think, you know, they've won what? They won two games last year and what, one game the year before. Two the year before so that So four, well. four wins in two, in two years is not good for anybody. But if you can have a guy that comes in here and they always talk about you know changing the culture, we're going to make this team better. We've seen a better offense, yes, but the defense has been awful. So if he can get four wins at the end of the year, I think he, it'll be successful enough to be like, okay, there's something here. There is substance here that we can build on top of in the years, in the years ahead of us. Mike, what are your thoughts? I think four is right on the mark. I even said that at the beginning of the year, looking at who they have left, I think, I don't know if it's going to be an upset this year because looking at Duquesne's statistics, their defense is pretty average, and their offense is towards the bottom of the pack. RMU has one of the better, well, not one of the better, but a better offense than um, Duquesne. And you also have to take into account that like the statistics are fairly skewed based off the simple point that that RMU game against James Madison, I don't think anyone in the NEC has really come up with a team, well, well, they did play ball, or CCSU did play ball well, state. And Duquesne played Hawaii, and Duquesne did play Hawaii. But James Madison's such a l- large gap in talent there that those games from that, the statistics from that, kind of weigh down RMU a ton because they played so poorly in that game. But but see, you say it weighs them down a ton. That's one game out of five now, and if you look at the rest of these games, like Robert Morris let up 699 yards. They let up. Well, I'm talking over- offensively. Looking at the off- offensive statistics, yes. Yes. Because the defense has, has been bad across the board yes. no matter who the opponent has been. Okay. I even said that against Virginia State because that was a Division Two team, and Virginia State has a kicker. This team doesn't have a win yet. So looking at this, I think they could upset Duquesne this weekend. I don't think that would be – a. it's going to be a good game. Duquesne's offense is, I think, like sixth in something in the conference in like total offense. So they're not, like I said, not that great – I think they're going to beat Central State. So that's that puts them at three wins for the year, and I think they're going to beat Wagner at the end. I have them losing to St. Francis, who we saw, I believe, beat or played Dayton closely at some point, I remember. Yeah. Uh, Sacred Heart, who's been on a roll. They've arguably been the best team in the conference. I would and, believe that they're the favorite to win the NEC yes. right now. And Eastern Kentucky, who you and I talked a few weeks ago I pit had that as a win for them, and you're like, hold your horses. Eastern Kentucky is pretty darn good. Yeah. So that's in, in Kentucky as well. But I do have them beating Wagner at the end of the season yeah. to kind of cap that off. But I think four wins is reasonable. That's where I had them at. Um, if they don't beat Duquesne, three. I do. I truly do believe they'll beat Wagner yeah. in, Virginia, in Central State. Sorry. Yeah, I would agree. I think I think four wins is a reasonable mark, and like you said, you have to look at the games that are actually winnable. Um, any game in conference is winnable, and that Central State game should be a win because the Central State's a, a bad Division Two team. So yeah, I would say I would say if they can walk out with four wins, um, and to me, it's not just the wins; it's the performance. If you can see the performance, that's that's great. You know, again, if the offense continues to perform well, that is a successful season to me for a team that hasn't had a really great offense for a long time. With that being said, we're going to move on to our next segment, where it's kind of a game for you guys. So this is this is Luke and Mike. I want to see what you guys have. Um, It's called Truth or Lies. So I'm going to give you guys a statement, and you have to tell me whether you believe that's that's truth, and you believe that will happen, or you believe that's a lie, and that that is not true in any sense. So the first one here, um, we're going to talk about the offense that's performed great, specifically running back Elijah Jackson. He's had back-to-back 100-yard games. He was the first 100-yard rusher last two weeks ago since 2015, since Cole Blake did it in 2015. So Elijah Jackson winning his second straight NEC Rookie of the Week. It, will Elijah Jackson win the NEC Rookie of the Year? Is that a truth or a lie? I'm gonna I, say I'm gonna say truth. On I like that it one. too. I'm I'm on the I'm on the Elijah now, Jackson granted, bandwagon. No, granted, I'm uh, yes, I'm on the Elijah Jackson bandwagon as well. I'm very excited to see what he's gonna do over the course of his uh, time at Robert Morris University. 
However, I don't know what all the other rookies in the NEC are doing, but if he's won it two weeks in a row in conference play, I think that has something to say. And I expect, barring injuries, that it's going to continue because that offensive line has done a great job of opening up holes. Even for Terrence Stevens, who I believe ended up with 94 yards and hardly didn't touch the ball that often. He had 74 on that one play. I think it was the Colonials' first play from scrimmage that they ran where he busted off for 74 yards. But Jackson is interesting because he has that quick burst of pace where he could just get around the edge and grab that quick 15 yards. I don't think he has quite the top end speed where he's just blowing by everyone on the field, but he has he's quick enough to where those quick little short hitters, if you're if like 20, 30 yards away, he's quick enough to get that 30 yards is fast enough to beat out the rest of your defense. So I do think he has the potential to win um, rookie of the, or yeah, rookie of the year. All right. So Next one for you guys. Um, and again, if you've watched these games, you saw the incredible Anthony Delafamine catch where he's tripping over the center connected defender and he still managed to keep his focus and make the catch. Additionally, he did made some really impressive catches against Bryant as well. Um, he's had over 100 receiving yards combined in the last two games, consistently been at the top of the receptions list for Robert Morris as of recently. Do you believe that Anthony Delafamine is the best receiver for this Robert Morris football team. Truth or lies? I think it's the truth. I Here's my thought about it. You, I've looked at like the numbers over the past weeks, and Delphamine is always at the top as far as wide receivers. Yeah. But then the next couple guys are uh, Matthew Gonzalez, Steve Petrick, both um, tight ends. He's the, he's the best pure wide receiver that Army football has right now. That's just that's just the facts. Um, it's it's definitely close between him and Vecchio as the best pure wide receiver. Are you a little biased, uh, Penn Trafford grad, right here? Um, TV twelve. No, I'm I'm not. I'm just looking at the statistics here. Um, Vecchio has more yards. He has one more touchdown. Uh, he has three more receptions. Um, same amount of games played. So the statistics give the slight nod to Vecchio. However. He saw more use against Dayton. I don't think we hardly saw Del Del Femini at all against Dayton. Um, So, actually, he has more than that. I was looking at uh, Delano Madison's numbers. So, Del Femini has four games played, nine nine receptions, 125 yards, no touchdowns, along of 23, averages 31.2 a game. I still think Timmy Vecchio has a full game of. But his his averages, he averages two yards less. Yeah, two yards less per reception, and but he still averages more per game than Del Femini. Um, Del Femini, of course, what redshirt freshman, correct? Yeah. So, pardon me, Vecchio is still what junior? Yeah. I think by the end of the season, the statistics are saying right now that Vecchio is the better receiver. But I, I think, I think AD ball out is the uh, <laughs> is the better of the two. But I think on the team, if I'm when I see receiving, you got to account for tight ends cause, and running backs because that's just where football is right now. Yeah. And I think Matthew Gonzalez has earned that title. He's the, he's the, be- he's the best ball catcher Rob Morris has. Yeah. Right 18 receptions, 317 yards, 17.6 average, five touchdowns, and, of course, that long 81-yarder against Virginia State. And even against Central Connecticut State, he was fantastic. Down the seam, him and him and Walker have great, uh, great chemistry there, although the one he got – laid out on I don't know if you caught that one it was tipped at the line or something and the the safety caught him running across the field yeah. and blindsided him pretty good he was able to come back but if you lose him that is a major cog in your passing game he's a big he's a big body receiver and he's kind of like the current day NFL tight end where he's down the seam and it's real hard it's real hard to cover him because he's faster than a linebacker he's bigger than a cornerback or a defensive back rather so he creates that coverage issue but I think and the two wide receivers, Vecchio and um, Del Femini, because it's, I bet there's, I see there's a little bit of a gap between them and everyone else on that receiving core. I, I, I think it's gonna, it's gonna kill me a little bit to go with the Norwin boy, but I'm gonna have to go with Del Femini. <laughs> All right, so this, um, this leads me to our last truth or lie. Now, I think both of you would agree that the Robert Morris offensive line um, might be one of the strongest parts of this team this season. Do you believe that this Robert Morris offensive line is the best in the conference? Truth or lie? Um, it's hard to say. 
it's really hard to say because you know you try to compare it to how the defense is played against other teams offensive lines but the defensive line is bad not good not even like they're below average they're just bad right so when you have a team like Robert Morris who is keeping because last year we saw a lot of times Jimmy Walker's laid on his back and just with the ball sacked every it seemed like every possession he was sacked at least one time so this team's gotten better up front but at the same time you know we've we've talked yeah the, they're the best offensive line that I've seen at Robert Morris over the past couple years that's just my opinion um I'm not going to put him at one. I'm going to put him at two behind Sacred Heart. Sacred Heart has more rushing offense. Uh, Sacred Heart is one better in scoring offense. Uh, they're two better in uh, total offense altogether. So just based upon that, I'm going to have to give them the slight edge. However, in your, when you go to look at sacks against, Robert Morris has allowed excuse me, a total of five. Where so has... How did what in the world is this NEC? Um, oh, I apologize. I apologize. Where Sacred Heart has allowed twelve. It's just it's just <laughs> messed up. So Sacred Heart has allowed a lot more sacks. So I'm going to give it not a one and two necessarily, but like a one A and a one B. That's very close. And I'm going to put Robert Morris in that one B slot. So let's let's be clear. It was a it was a truth for you? Yes. And it was a lie for you. It was a. I mean, it was it's a, a fib. right down the it's middle. A, it's a fib. <laughs> A lie, a lie is wow, a little bit we're gonna more we're gonna have a third category. Yeah, a fib, the first one, it's am I gonna have to? Oh, it's, it's, it's a fib. A, we're gonna have to workshop. Like this. Forrest Gump's mama said, a little wh- it lie every now and then. So, okay. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you guys for participating in Truth or Lies. Yeah. Um. So we'll come back next Who week won? when we play again. Um. You're we, both winners. We pretty much said the same thing, <laughs> but you got a little fib in there. Yeah. I won. <laughs> <laughs> All, right. All right. So, with the rest of this show, we got to take a look at the upcoming matchup. The Steel City Showdown. Good old Duquesne's coming to town. Robert yeah, Morris Duquesne. Duque- we're going to Duquesne. Oh, so, man. Duquesne. Yes. 0 and 1 in conference. 3 and 3 overall. Okay. Um, you know that. Yeah. They have the second worst offense in the NEC and the third worst defense in the NEC, allowing 391 yards per game. Um, so. The only thing that's notable about them is they have the best third down conversion, which is actually oh just boy. ahead of Robert Morris. Oh, oh boy. <laughs> and as we know, Yikes. Robert Morris struggles in preventing stops on third well, down. So. Oh, boy. Let's clarify this. I think it's fair to say the reason they struggle to get off the field on third down is because they struggle on every down. Yes. So it's always so third it's, and it's short. All, yeah, it's always so like it's always third, third and, and one, short. Like third and one through like third and three. Like you don't see there's like... No, there's not a third and nine or a third and ten where you know they're throwing the ball. It's... But even right, if it is a third and ten, they... Yeah. yeah, even the if it's... Pass coverage is still very... Uh, yeah. So when you're looking at this matchup, one that did not end well for Robert Morris last year. Let's be clear. The no. final score of that game was 51-14 to 14 in favor of Duquesne nice. here at Joe Walton Stadium at Robert Morris Wasn't that University. homecoming last year? That was not homecoming last year. That is correct. Homecoming. Right. Wasn't homecoming CCSU last year again? Um, I, uh, you got me there. I don't know. I think it was. I don't know. That, right. That's not important. Anyways, the important thing is this matchup. Well, we can figure that out after the show. We can. We won't, though. So Probably not. <laughs> Like I said, I think I said it earlier. I think RMU can pull this one out. The defense got to stop them, though. This, the defense y- can't allow six. Or I'm sorry. Yeah, I was going to say seven hundred. I meant six hundred and ninety nine. Yeah, let's not throw the seven hundred out there. If that, I mean, that's not fair, right? <laughs> Yards of offense against them and allow fifty six points again. It, that that's that's the major factor. If the defense can play half decent, they don't have to be great. They don't have to hold Duquesne to thirteen points or something like that. Just can we keep it under thirty for a week? Can they keep it under thirty? So I think that's a reasonable goal. Yeah. So I don't want to be that guy that points to the weather, but it's going to be very cold. You know how it's been really hot here. It's uh, going to be geez. very very cold. It's in October. It's going to start Pittsburgh, to feel like and fall, fall up weather. And football weather. Football weather. They come to play. So that's going to be one of those things where, like, the weather gets a little colder. That ball stings a little bit more when it hits you. I think that that could be a potential factor for both sides. 
Well, good thing Robert Morris is in last place in rushing and passing defense, Sam. <laughs> well, so I mean, when they allow the 699 the yards in one game, they're not going to have high defensive ranks. So Mike. that means when the that uh, ground, do ca- and I honestly think mm, teams haven't even gone to the full passing capabilities yet because they've been able to just do it on the ground and run against this team at will. And if it's cold and nasty, guess what they're going to be doing? They're going to be running the ball. And Robert Morris no, that's hasn't a, that's a very fair point. hasn't shown we, we anything that maybe. they're gonna be able to stop the run. And this is coming from a guy that thinks RMU is gonna win the game because I think the offense is that good. Because yeah, you, because if you think about it too, stat sheet, Duquesne's rushing defense they're they're number four, so they're they're all right. Worse than Central Connecticut State though. Interesting. Central Connecticut State third best in the conference. Duquesne's fifth or fourth. So, I think Elijah Jackson is going to go off again. Oh, I, I think I think agree. Jimmy Walker, who's been fantastic the past two weeks, yeah, or the past two games rather, because they had that bye week in between there. He's done a great job of securing the ball. Yes, he had the interception. I believe that was Robert Morris's only turnover. So that's another big thing. The turnovers are coming down. We're seeing that progressively lowered. They had three against Bryant. They had only that one against uh, Central Connecticut State. So, in that one, that, I'm going to pin that one on Walker. It was a bad throw. He threw it to Vecchio. It was kind of behind him and, and high. Vecchio tried to make a one-handed grab, tipped it up in the air, and uh, right into the arms of a Blue Devils defender. But I think with the offensive line that the Colonials have and Jackson and Stevens, and then they're going to hit you with the play action, then hit Gonzalez over top on the screen, I think that offense could put up, I'm going to say it, they might, I'm going to say the F word. 50 points. Oh boy. Yeah. So I oh made this boy. claim on Twitter against oh. Virginia State. Because all, all tweets are completely 100% Accurate. hot takes. <laughs> yeah. Accurate. 100%. <laughs> um, I said that Robert Morris would put up what would be the greatest offensive performance of all time, which had to be, I, if I believe I'm remembering this correctly, it was about 565 yards. Now, Michael Shuley. Do you believe that yes. with that fifty points? Yep, greatest offensive performance of all time. Are you are you making Ooh. that statement right now? How, you said five sixty five. Five sixty five. They had four eighty seven against. Let me Central let me look up the stat sheet. Let me look up the stat sheet. Here. He's stalling right now. That's yes. what he's doing. He can't make I'm, that I'm, claim. I'm, I'm competing. Um, Luke Yost, while he's doing that, um, what no, do you I'm think? Gonna, I'm gonna, hold on. Oh, yeah. Oh, Answer that me, one. Answer that me, one. Um, <laughs> I'm buying your time. I don't need I, time. I, I, my I do like I, – I'm going answer. to jump on the uh, the Mike Shuley Express here with the 50 points. Greatest offensive performance of all time? Without looking it up, yeah, probably. Because this is going <laughs> oh. to be a game where they're going to – where Rob Morse is going to reset the defense because you can do it against a team who is second worst offenses in the NEC. That's that's a good point. Like You're going to be able to reset your defense here. You're going to get back to basics, back to fundamentals. You've had times where they showed – I don't want to say glimmers of hope, but there was a little bit of like, oh, yeah, they could actually be uh-huh. semi-good here. And now you're going to get a team that's supposed to be, I don't want to say a cupcake game, but like is going to be an easier team. They're, they're struggling right now. I think it's fair to say yeah. Duquesne's yeah. struggling yeah, a little bit. Yeah, I think so bit. too. And you're going to be able to reset your reset your defense here, and that's what's going to give them that necessary, maybe not turnovers, but they're going to be they're going to get a lot more possessions. You're going to stop, and they're going to get a lot more, you know, punts are going to be a big deal in this game. Um and yeah, they're going to be able to put up that the fifty points, you know, five hundred sixty plus yards. So Mike truly, really, yes, greatest offensive performance of all time right now. You can even give me a number where they're going to rank all time. A lot of if they're going to get there, if they're going to be top ten, give me a number. Well, if not, well, they were eight this week. Wait, you right? said, yeah, you said best four, offensive was it four eighty seven? Four eighty seven. Where does that eight? defensive performance rank? That might be number two this season behind uh, James Madison. How many yards did the Dukes put up? 700-something. Yeah, it was 700-something. It was like 725 Yikes. or something. Um, you raise a good point, though, about uh, Duquesne's offense not being that great, but CCSU's offense also last week coming into the game wasn't that great either. They were pretty smack-dab average, actually. Um, yeah, every team's done about the same thing to Robert Morris besides Virginia State. You could yes. say. And then besides James Madison, who was above and beyond what you're going to get in the NEC. And, and those two teams there, James Madison's up here, CCSU's it's down an, here. They're anomalies or, compared to yeah. what you're going to expect if you're Robert Moore exactly. for the rest of the season. Uh, I do like him, though. I think out of the two teams, I think Virginia State is the closest to an NEC caliber perform- per uh, uh, team. 
rather. Yeah. I'm not. I'm. I'm going to stop dancing around your question here, though. Five sixty-five. I'm going to say not quite. So five, give me five, give me a number. Ooh, they're going to come close. Five hundred yards at least. Yes, I'm. Uh, you say top five greatest offensive performance of all time. Well, I don't know what their top five is. Like what numbers they would. It have would to if be. it was above five hundred, it would be. If, if it was, yeah, top, it would put them in the top five. Yeah. I think they're going to go. Let's go five fifteen. Okay. I think is a reasonable number. Um, I'm going to say they're going to run. I think Stevens and Jackson both go off for over a hundred yards. Okay. I'm going to say last time that happened. Two hundred yard rushers. Um, it's been a while. I know it's that it was they be came the first close time. last week. They did. They came really Stevens close. Had ninety four um, yards away. Yeah, but I, I know it's been a while. Yeah, I could see them both going off for big games. Um, through the air, I could see. Could we see Jimmy Walker's first three hundo of the season? I think so. through the air, I, I could see so. that. Um, I think Gonzalez is going to have a big game again. He's just he's been phenomenal. One of the best tight ends in F- FCS he's shown to be this year. Not even just in the NEC. Um, I'm going to say final of this one. We're going to go 56. We're not. I'm sure we're. I'm jumping in here, but I think they're going to put up 56 points. So that's what seven touch eight touchdowns. So I'm 515 yards. Yeah. Right. So not quite, but good. All right. So. Now that we have Mike Shuley's offensive prediction, we're just going to go right into predictions here as we're, we're winding down right, here we're at the end of the in. show. So we'll, we'll start with you, Mike, since you did give us the first number. So wh- who's going to win, and what's the score going to be? For the first time this year, I think. I'm picking the Colonials to win. This is the first time I can confirm. Shuley's shock picks on armucentrumedia.com will be very interesting this week. Plug it. Shameless plug. Plug. <laughs> Um, yeah, 56 to, ooh, trying to think, do some quick maths in my head here of like common score possibilities when Robert Morris gives up a ton of points on defense again. Um, 52, 56, 52. It's going to be, it's going to be a close one, but the Colonials are going to get the edge. Really? They're still, I think they're going to give up over. I think they're going to give up over nice. 400 yards of defense it's gonna, it's again. It's going to be a wild game. It's gonna oh, it's going to be a shootout. Be a cold that's that's shootout. why this I team is so intriguing is the offense is so good and the defense has just been so bad that it's still fun it's to watch that shootout, Bryant yeah. game. I went to, I went to work. I'm driving to work. I get to work. I pull it up as I'm like Wait a minute. They're winning here. <laughs> they're winning here. It's 46 to 42. Where would this come from? And then they ended up giving up that touchdown late. That Bryant or I'm sorry, the Dayton game. It was, what, a one-possession, two-possession game at halftime? They got the ball. It, that was not as a big of a blowout as the score has shown it to be. The Virginia State game was just... Train wreck. Well, <laughs> I'll put that one on the weather. I'll, g- I'll give that one to the weather because that game was miserable. It was wet. It was and cold. And the ball was slipping all over the place. Um, obviously, James Madison's just a wash right there. But, yeah, it's it's going to be a shootout. Uh, buckle up. I'll be all at right. the Emmys. Luke Yost. Um, your turn. I'm taking the Colonials. All right. Uh, 52-14. What? Oh, wow. So one up I, them. Wow. I think, I think the I think the Colonials, the defense is going to come to play this Statement week. game. Statement game. Yeah. You want to put a you want to put a dollar do you want to put a dollar on uh how low or how many points do Kane will score? Want to set an over under? What's the over under? What do we, what do we go We're through? we're going to discuss this afterwards cuz we're running yeah, out of time and I want to make my pick. So I'm going to bet and when you take your dollar on that one. <laughs> <laughs> so my prediction, I think both of you are wrong. I don't think this is going to be that great of an offensive performance. Really? I think it's going to be cold. I think that that's going to come into play. I think it's going to be – you're going to see a little bit more defense, no, no. emphasis on little bit. a little bit. 35-31, Robert Morris sneaks away with their first conference win, but it's going to be a tight one. So on that note, guys – Thanks so much for tuning in for the very first web show. Thanks for coming yeah. and hanging out wow, with us. You get to see our faces done. now. I know, which nice. is which is rough. Um, you see, we dressed up for this face? event. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but more next you time? can catch all of these broadcasts <laughs> on. You can listen to them on Army Radio, but you can also catch this live on ArmyCentralMedia.com and on Army TV's YouTube channel. We're gonna be back every Tuesday for all of this Army football goodness. So thank you so much for tuning in mm-hmm. to the Bobby Mo Football Show, and we'll see you next week.